Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're exploring the PGX package, one of the most popular PostgreSQL drivers for Go. If you're working with PostgreSQL in your Go projects, this package is a must-know. Let's begin. The PGX package is a high-performance PostgreSQL driver and toolkit for Go. It's not just a simple database driver, it offers connection pooling, native support for advanced PostgreSQL features, and an extensive API for database interactions. First, let's install the PGX package. Open your terminal and run this command. For demonstration, we will use these tables, authors, books, and members. The author table has these fields, ID, name, and email. Here are the fields of the book table. It has a foreign author ID, referencing to ID in the authors table. This table tracks information about library members. Next, we will create these tables in the database. Now that the tables are created, let's see how PGX interacts with the database. Here we have defined structures representing these tables. We'll start by setting up a connection to our PostgreSQL database. PX provides a way to create a single connection and a pool of connections as well. Here is how a simple connection is made with pgx.connect. Let's see how the pool is made by calling pgxpool.new. We will be using connection pooling in our code. Here is the connection string. This is PostgreSQL URL. This is the username, then comes the password. This is the IP and the port. This is the database. We initialize the pool, pgxpool.new. We pass the context and the connection string. This connects to the database and sets up a pool for efficient connection management. It returns the pool and an error if any. Here, we handle the error. Here, we defer the closure of the pool. There is an error here. We need to install this package. Let us install this package. Let's see if this works. When we run the program, we don't see any error. This means the connection was established. Let's insert some initial data into the database. Here, we use the exec method to insert data into the authors table. This is the query. In the query, we pass placeholders $1 and $2 for the values. These are the values. Then, as usual, we handle the error. Let us try this out. Now we will check the table in the database. Here is the row we inserted. Now let's see how transactions work. A transaction allows us to execute multiple queries as a single unit of work. If something goes wrong, we can roll back all changes. With the begin method, we start the transaction. It returns the transaction and the error. The error is handled here. Here we defer the rollback of the transaction. Rollback works a little differently. It is safe to call even if the transaction is already closed. It has no effect if the transaction commits successfully. To commit the transaction, the commit method is called. Within this block of code, we add statements.
we added three statements here by calling the exec function on the transaction. We insert data into authors, books and members tables with these statements. Let's comment the previous insert that has already run. Let's run the program. Now, we will check the tables to see if the transaction has values inserted in the respective tables. The records we inserted in the transaction are there in the tables. Next, we will see how to query. First, we will comment the transaction as we have already executed it. Let's fetch all authors from the database. We use query on the pool to fetch multiple rows. Here, we execute a SQL query to fetch all authors' ID, name and email fields from the authors' table. The result of this query is stored in rows, which is an iterator for the rows returned by the query. If there's an error during the query execution, it will be assigned to error. Here, we check if an error occurred during the execution of the SQL query. This ensures that the rows resource is properly closed after we finish processing. Now we will iterate over the rows and create a slice of author struct that will contain the details of all authors. We declare a slice of author structs to store the list of authors retrieved from the database This loop iterates over each row in the query result. Inside the loop, we declare a variable author of type author. Here, we extract the values from the current row and assign them to the fields of the author variable. Rows.scan maps the columns of the current row to the fields ID, name and email in the author struct. If an error occurs during scan, this logs the error and terminates the program. If the scan succeeds, the author struct, representing one row, is appended to the author's slice. Let's print the entire author's slice to the console. Now we will see this in action. Here is the list of all authors. Now we will see how to query a single row. Query row executes a CQL query to fetch a single row of data from the books table. $1 is a parameterized query placeholder, which is replaced by Harry Potter in this case. Scan maps the values retrieved from the database to the fields of the book struct. Book.id gets the ID column value. Title, author ID, published year and genre are populated similarly. If the query or the scan operation fails, we log the error and exit. If no error occurs, the book struct is printed here, displaying the details of the queried book. Let us run this code now. Here is the detail of the book. Now we see how update and delete work. The author ID variable is assigned the value 1, representing the ID of the author whose name will be updated. This is the new name that we will assign. We again use exec here. Here is the query. It has two placeholders $1 and $2. This is the name and author ID. If the update fails, we log the error and exit. If the update succeeds, a success message is printed. When we run this program, we see the author is updated. Let's see this in the DB. We can see the record is updated. Let's delete a record now. We will delete a book record. Here we define a variable book ID representing the ID of the book to be deleted. 
We again use exec to execute the SQL statement. This is the query. $1 is replaced by the book ID. We will comment the update code. Let's run the program. The book is deleted successfully. We had this record in the books table. Let's see if this is deleted. There are no records in the table now. And that's a wrap. Today, we covered a full example of working with the PGX package, connecting to a database, using transactions, querying, updating, and deleting data. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more Golang tutorials. See you in the next episode.